the force is female <laughs> still <laughs> has star wars learned nothing yes yes it's learned absolutely absolutely nothing yeah so uh a rumored a uh, female centric uh star wars series uh is on the way and its showrunner is leslie headland all right leslie headland uh, harvey weinstein's former personal assistant <laughs> <laughs> and the co-creator, emphasis on co, I imagine, of Netflix's Russian Doll, uh, which is critically acclaimed, but, well, yeah, I haven't seen it. Maybe it's great. I don't know. But just because the critics like it means absolutely nothing in today's world. Uh, but anyway, she's rumored to be working on an upcoming Star Wars series. And uh, what can we expect from her? Well, let's... Let's let's take a look at uh, Leslie here. So Headline worked at Miramax, the company founded by Weinstein, for six years. She was his personal assistant for one of those years. <laughs> Never really said a word, huh? except a play about an abusive boss. Okay, but um, yeah. Anyway, at Variety's Inclusion Summit, <laughs> Headline. Headline, Headland explains that white people are not diverse and that white women need to step up their game. At the beginning of the clip, uh, Headland states, I just want to say that I think white women need to kind of step up their game, to be quite honest. Sorry, but I'm calling you bitches out. You really do. I... <laughs> See, she can use the word, I guess, because she is a white woman. Uh, are those the rules? I don't know. She continues, because, like, I couldn't agree more with everything these women are saying, but I'm also seeing the silent killer, which is a lot of white women at the top who are kind of reinforcing a lot of old ideas. You know, like merit and uh, surviving on talent and, uh, uh, you know, being rewarded for work and stuff like that, rather than skin and genitals. See, those are old ideas. It needs to be all about skin and genitals today. Anyway, uh, she continues, I think a lot of it, to give them the benefit of the doubt, oh, well, that's gracious of you, Leslie. Uh, and I'll just speak from my own personal experience. I wasn't sure how to be an ally. I got so caught up with what kind of terminology I was supposed to be using in being politically correct. It seems you're still caught up in it, uh, Leslie. Yeah, I would think so. I think you're deep in that Kool-Aid pool. Uh, she adds, so I started to rise in television. I just started to get more blunt and just start saying, I would like a black writer. Because if I had said diverse, you get, well, white is diverse, which is something somebody said to me. And I was like, wow. I was like, it's not cool. <laughs> no, she didn't say I want the best writer here and there, regardless of their skin or genitals. No, no, no. She reduced black people to nothing but their skin. And she's completely unaware of this. Uh, so that's why I emphasize, if the Russian Doll series is really great, uh, co-creator, the co-part. <laughs> I don't know who the other creator is, but <laughs> it might be telling uh, in that aspect. Anyway, in an interview with Rolling Stone promoting Sleeping with Other People in 2015, she stated, I was lucky to come along when R-rated female-centric comedies became moneymakers. Yeah, comedies aren't moneymakers anymore because you can't be funny because it's offensive. But anyway, she added, comedy and horror are really two of the only genres where women can get a voice now. It's not big budget franchise movies and superhero movies. Ah, there you go. That's the deal. Uh, you want that money. Are you interested in that genre? No, you're not. Do you know anything about it? No, no. But it's the money. I mean, your feminist films from your student uh, film school student days, those aren't going anywhere. But um, the superhero films is where it's at. That's the, really the only game going, you know. Uh, boy, you chose unwisely. You went for Star Wars. It's already dead. <laughs> you should have went for Marvel. <laughs> uh, before that one is inevitably uh, dead. Headline, 
uh, then claims that Hollywood dislikes women <laughs> like you of a certain color. You 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 really uh, are not appreciative of them. Anyway, uh, using Ava du uh, DuVernay as an example. Look what happened to Ava DuVernay. Well, she just keeps failing upward. So I, what do you mean? <laughs> she's doing pretty good so far. <laughs> uh, she's the Beyonce of filmmaking. Oh no, she's not. <laughs> no. And she can't get nominated for Selma. What other reason can there be except, well, they don't like women? I get. Oh my God, she's this. This is so bad. Uh, Selma was nominated for Best Picture by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences in 2015. It was nominated alongside Birdman, Imitation Game, Boyhood, The Theory of Everything, American Sniper, Whiplash, and The Grand Budapest Hotel. Birdman won the Oscar. Well, it had the word man in the title, so that's why it won. Apparently. Uh, Selma also received nominations at the Golden Globes, the Critics' Choice Awards, the Independent Spirit Awards, the MTV Movie Awards, and the Satellite Awards. So, yeah. <laughs> so much... For uh, Miss Hedlund knowing anything, even about her own industry, to make a claim like that, but um, speaks volumes, doesn't it? Well, Hedlund continued describing the reason she believes Hollywood has any interest in women. They're not interested in us unless we're in a group, okay, and in a Vanity Fair spread, probably just wearing lingerie. Well, not all of them, uh, Leslie. <laughs> Uh, after making these comments, Hedlund says she won't complain. <laughs> I guess meaning now she won't. <laughs> but listen, I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, you really can't. You really can't. You've been just given pampered opportunities that most people can only dream of. Uh, I can't complain, or rather, I won't. <laughs> Too late. I got to make my romantic comedy. I got to get out of my depression and work through some stuff with this movie that's really helped me out. Um, yeah, well, you traded in your depression for bigotry, apparently. Uh, speaking with Deadline about Russian Doll and its Emmy nominations, Headline, uh, Headline, I keep calling it Headline, Headline stated, I think that that's the other thing that's very cool. Also about all the nominations in the lead actress category. I, they're all very complicated women. And the idea that our peers are acknowledging that and looking at that and saying, this is what we've discovered this year. We've discovered that women are really complicated and funny and that they don't have to be on one end of the spectrum or another. <laughs> yes, only this year, only this year has that been discovered. If you look at any movies in the previous years, women just were not complex, complicated characters at all. At the massive insult she just did to all the women in the industry for decades. <laughs> Again, not too bright. I'm sorry, but no. Uh, I, of course, you can always throw it in. This is the BS that she thinks she has to say. And to some extent, she's probably right. Uh, but as far as that, uh, on one end of the spectrum or the other, oh, well, now, Leslie, we know that's not true. They have to be on a certain uh, part of that spectrum because you've already eliminated one. Ah, <laughs> oh, geez. She added, uh, they can exist on a never-ending spectrum. No, no, they can't. Of human emotion and psychology. No, no, they can't. <laughs> I think that's really huge, she says. And another interesting tidbit. It appears Hedlund has deleted much of her Twitter profile. Oh, I'll bet. The account was originally created in 2013. The oldest tweet that is publicly available is from March 27, 2020. <laughs> Man, that's a lot of tweets. According to Social Blade, it looks like she deleted around... 2,500 tweets in early July 2019. Gee, I wonder why. Must have said, hey, Leslie, we're going to give you a Star Wars show. Hey, you haven't said anything about our core demographic, have you? <laughs> Whoops. Better check. Uh, and another round in 2000. Uh, oh, no. Another round, another 2,000 tweets at the beginning of June 2019 were deleted. With the deletions, she only has... 93 tweets currently available on her profile. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, man. Some of those tweets deleted, uh, deleted tweets concern a play written by David Mamet about Harvey Weinstein and were captured by Vulture in February 2018, as well as her own play title, Assistance, written about her experience working for Weinstein and Miramax. She refers to Mamet as an old white guy who doesn't believe rape is a thing. <laughs> uh, Mamet has pretty much come out as conservative, so of course, uh, he's hated. So yeah, uh, apparently, according to Leslie, he doesn't believe rape exists. Y yeah, uh-huh. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, her tweet reads, uh, this is from February 28th, 2018, a Broadway producer shouldn't be asking an old white guy, <laughs> see, see, and now it's ageism as well, <laughs> because he's old, that's even worse, the worst kind of white man is, is an old one, so, uh, old white guy who doesn't believe rape is a thing, to write a play about Harvey Weinstein, a Broadway producer should revive, uh, revive? The one of four. Oh, okay, so it was an older play. Okay, a Broadway producer should revive the one a former female employee wrote in 2008. So she's upset that Mamet wrote a play about Harvey Weinstein as well, and he's a bigger name than her, uh, probably because of the amount of work that he uh, produced that uh, was well received. Yeah, that's the problem. He's and and when someone's older than you, they have more years to have done that. That's why they're in the position they're in, Leslie. Once you have that amount of work, maybe you can be there too. But based on what you emphasize, rather than the merit and your talents, uh, seems unlikely at this point. It doesn't really matter what the bubble people say. It matters what the audience says. And if they don't show up, Leslie, you won't have a career on par with Mammoth. Uh, let's see, it continues. Uh, it took me a very long time to realize that an abusive relationship with your boss is still an abusive relationship. Uh, it apparently took you six years or maybe just the one year that you worked with this uh, uh, creep. <laughs> and I decided to write about that experience and that realization as best and truthfully as I could at the time. Uh, yeah, at the time, right? Uh, because he might have needed his help still until it all it all crashed and burned for the guy uh, while you looked the other way, uh, despite what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. But the reason this makes me so mad has nothing to do with my play. Yeah, it does. Well, with you, you know, and you're not getting attention. But it had everything to do with the fact that this was the best fucking idea some Broadway producer could come up with. Bullshit! Try harder! Support women! Listen to women! Believe women! Hashtag time's up! <laughs> uh, you see, Mamet has the wrong genitals and the wrong skin color. So you broke the rules, Broadway producer. You broke the rules and you should be punished. You're supposed to just do whatever women say. Well, not all of them, right, Leslie? Not the white ones. Well, you know, the white ones that are allies and have learned to be better. Like you, Leslie. Yeah. Yeah, so believe Leslie. Uh, so, there she is. Uh, 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 skin and genitals is all that matters. The force is female. And there you go. Well, boy, can't wait for another season of Mandalorian. I mean, how much of this is going to be forced onto that thing? You know, you, they lure you in, right? You know, it was a good first season. It seemed like, hey, if they follow this path, Star Wars might make a comeback, although I'm dubious because of the destruction done to the original characters in The Last Jedi and all that. That's a hard thing to come back from. Really hard. So uh, side projects that are actually good, uh, boy, it's still... I don't know, uh, because uh, even people that are hardcore Star Wars fans, uh, they'll pick apart Mandalorian to the point, <laughs> you know, even though it's a, it's an okay series. It's it's brilliant compared to the Disney sequels and whatnot. But, oh, good Lord, it, 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 this this is what you're heading... And then, of course, after seeing their High Republic crap and all that stuff, uh, yeah, I think this is happening. Um, there you go. Leslie Headland. Uh, Darth Weinstein's <laughs> apprentice. <laughs> uh, we'll make sure that the force is female. We'll see. Yeah. But only on a certain part of the spectrum, remember. That's important. Skin and genitals, ladies and gentlemen. You're nothing. You are absolutely nothing but skin and genitals. Gee, I hope you have enjoyed this little chat. <laughs>
<laughs> please like and share and subscribe and check out the link description below that have my mini stars, my comic book, my t-shirts and artwork and whatnot that you might want to purchase. And you can check out my podcast, Mr. Nelson show over at radiomisfits.com. And of course you can also watch my videos over at BitJoat because who knows that might be the only place they are. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know. All right. Thanks again for watching and we'll do it again soon. Bye-bye.